the final day of the 2021 Georgia Legislative Session, which is known as Sine Die, was last Wednesday, March 31st. It's been a busy several weeks under the Gold Dome and under our own roofs as well, because some of us have testified online via Zoom, we've made phone calls, we've sent emails to legislators, and we've watched legislative sessions all on video. Gears is pleased to share some exciting updates for children birth to five and their families that happened as a result of the legislative session. The House and Senate passed the FY22 budget late last Wednesday. The budget included a three and a half million dollar increase for the Child Care and Parent Services, or CAPS, program. CAPS provides low income working families with child care scholarships. The pandemic has underscored the important role child care plays in supporting children's learning and allowing parents to return to work. And yet only an estimated 15% of income eligible children in Georgia receive a CAPS scholarship. The budget also included an additional $1.7 million for a 2.5% increase to Georgia's pre-K classroom operations. This is a critical increase at a time when pre-K classrooms are experiencing increased costs due to health and safety standards. The budget for Georgia's pre-K also included an additional $1.5 million for training for pre-K teachers and the addition of one pre-K specialist position that was eliminated in last year's budget. House Bill 146 which would provide three weeks of paid parental leave for over 250,000 state employees passed unanimously out of the Senate last Monday. The bill is now headed to the governor's desk where he has 40 days to sign or veto it. If he does nothing, the bill will become law. Paid parental leave benefits employers, families, and children. It has been shown to decrease infant mortality, reduce the share of low birth weight babies, and improve newborns' health and well-being. Support for paid parental leave is overwhelmingly strong and bipartisan. A recent GEARS poll of likely Georgia voters found that 88% of Georgians support paid parental leave including 82% of Republicans and 96% of Democrats. Thank you to Representative Houston Gaines and Senator Butch Miller for your leadership on this bill. We look forward to continuing to work with the legislator, our partners, and employers across the state in improving access to adequate paid leave for all Georgians. On the healthcare front, HB 163 would implement express lane eligibility, enabling the state to use SNAP application data to identify and enroll eligible children in Medicaid and Peach Care. This would simplify the enrollment process and provide coverage for an additional 60 to 70,000 uninsured children. The bill passed both chambers earlier in March and has been sent to the governor. Should he sign it, Georgia would still need to submit a state plan amendment to the federal government before express lane eligibility goes into effect. Thank you to Chairwoman Sharon Cooper and Chairman Dean Burke for your sponsorship and to our partners at Voices for Georgia's Children and the Georgia Division of Family and Children's Services for your leadership on this bill. This is the first year of a two-year legislative session, meaning that bills that fail to pass this year may be reconsidered in the 2022 legislative session. In addition, legislators will return later this year for a once in a decade special session to redraw legislative districts based on the 2020 census data. We hope that by next year, we'll be able to share more in-person conversations, more handshakes, and even fancy peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with our friends and colleagues at, at, under the Gold Dome. For now, we'd like to thank Georgia's legislators for your service on behalf of young children and their families and the people who serve them, particularly during this difficult time. And most importantly, thanks to all of you who reached out to your legislators and advocated on behalf of Georgia's youngest learners. Your collective voice made all the difference. 
We hope you will stay connected to GEARS for more state and federal legislative updates and advocacy opportunities in the weeks and months to come.